Um, oh goodness, today is July 13th, I believe. It is floss tube 113. Didn't even do that on purpose, but that works. Uh, and it's been a couple of weeks, but I've been super busy. So, um, I figured I better get this recorded now because I leave for a quilt retreat early tomorrow morning and I'll be gone all weekend. And then next week I would like to do my mid-year whip parade. So, um, I don't have a ton of whips this week because, uh, the last time I recorded was in June. It was, uh, June 20th. Um, July in semi scene stitchers, they do like an, a version of Uno. So you have four whips that you kind of focus on those four for that game. So I've pretty much been just working on those four, but, um, I did work on a couple other things since I last saw you in June. So I got a pile back here. This is all my quilting stuff I'm taking with me. Um, I'm excited and I'm nervous because I've never done a quilting retreat before. There's only 12 of us. Um, but I do get to go with Janet Jabber and her sister Annette. So that'll be fun. And then I know the, um, the person that's running it is Jenny and we met her at, uh, Stitch Away in January. So I know me and three other people. So that's, that's pretty good odds. I think I'm good. So, um, let's get into the whips because I need to go do some work before I head out of town tomorrow. Um, and the quilt retreat is in Shipshawana. I'm excited. So to round out June, I worked on two things I haven't touched in a while. The first is Mini the Possibilities Evolutions. This is um, Mini Max Color, charted by Heaven Earth Designs. Uh, here is where it was last time. And there we are now. So I've been working on this one here and a lot of the background. Um, I want to say I got almost a thousand stitches in this one, but here's what it looks like so far. I still love it. I think the colors are amazing. I'm so glad I chose Max Color. Uh, this is one over one on 25 count Easy Grid. Um, I think, I can't remember, hold on, let me check if that was a whip go call. I don't know. I don't know if it was a whip go call or not. Um, but I worked on it anyway. So then the other one I worked on in June, now this is from the Keepsake Calendar. 2021 that's what it looks like you can only get these from craftways um and it's kind of a pain like either you get lucky enough for them to send it to you and with a bill or um you have to like search ebay for them so i've already finished which one the deer the deer is done and now i'm working on the fox so I pulled this out. I have not touched this one yet this year. So here's where I was at the beginning of the year. And I have to fold this or you're gonna see right through it. There's where it is now. So I'm getting some plants done. And this is on a 40 count um, bronze age from Be Stitch Me using one strand of floss. And I tell you, it's deceiving. They don't look that big, but it's a lot of, you really gotta pay attention. <laughs> it's not just solid stitching. Okay, and then, let's see. I pulled this one out just because I had a wild hair to work on it when we were watching TV one night. So this is, I gotta find the cover sheet. Little Dove Designs, Spring Awakening. And I'm doing this on a 14 count platinum. 
Um, I started this, I want to say way back in 2020. Way back. So here is where it was last time. And I'm pretty sure I have worked on this one this year. And there's where it is now. So I'm closing it on the bottom. I don't know if you can see. And I've done a little bit of back stitch, but not a ton. Um, just basically where I know the key snap's not going to touch. So I did like the music notes. And then right over here, you can see that orange stitch. That is the center of a bottom flower. So I have enough room, barely. But I did, I finished the birds. I got the music notes in. I got the clouds back stitched. Umbrellas, rain. Um, and then I finished, oh, I did some more of these flowers and I finished the little um, pennant flags. So it's coming along. It is coming along. I think this one's really cute. I'm glad I didn't stop doing them. Even though it's not something I would choose to do now, um, I'm glad I didn't, didn't give up on it because I do like them. Okay, and then for the four projects that I chose for Uno. So the first one is Mini Casa. This is also Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, Jeremiah Kettner is the artist and he is no longer licensed by Hade. So this is technically a retired chart. Um, here is where it was last time. And that's where we are now. Lots and lots and lots of progress. Not only is this in Uno, this is also my focus for um, Full Coverage Fanatics. This is the project I'm using uh, for the Tour de France. Tour de France. And then uh, I'm using it for semi-sane stitchers, this or that. I, wait, is this or that? I don't know if it's semi-sane or Full Coverage Fanatics. It's one of the two. Um, I'm using it for that and I'm using it for... Oh, my by the numbers, somehow I missed, by the numbers I choose a project that I do 2,000 stitches on a month. Um, somehow I miss May. I don't know how I managed to miss May, but so I used this for July 1st, and then when I got July's 2,000 stitches in, I'm using it for May. So um, lots of stitches in on this this month, but I love it. I love it. This is... 28 count. One over one full cross. All right. And then the other project, because I really want to get it done because I'm getting really close, is Nora Corbett. This is T. And you know what's interesting? I still have not run across anyone else stitching this. I need to do like a search on Instagram and see if I can find if anyone else is where I don't understand it's gorgeous and you have two ladies instead of one it's it just blows my mind so I'm doing this on a 28 I think no 32 count Jobelin it is unnamed from be stitch me so here's where I was last time there we go there's where she is now. So she just was uh, an arm last time. Now she has an upper body. <laughs> and then here is the entire thing so far. Oh, I just love it so much. They're so pretty. So she is completely done, and then she is, mm, I'm going to go with like a quarter of the way, because her dress is not small. So, um, yeah, all four of these projects are going to go with me to my quilt retreat, because if an Uno is spun, I have to do 100 stitches on each one. And I don't want to miss that. It's like extra entries. So this one 
is actually, so WIPCO, there were three numbers called because the center um, square was called. And the uh, my left mine empty this year. I usually don't, but I did this year. And um, the other two numbers are the same project. <laughs> so my goal was a thousand stitches for each square. So I had to do 2,000 stitches on this. And this is Quaker Pumpkins by Hello from Liz Matthews. And I edited mine. So I left the words off the bottom completely. I'm using a Victorian Motto conversion. And it's on a 32 count Lugana. It's vanilla latte. So here is where I was before. And there it is now. Not a ton. <laughs> I think it's only been spun like three times so far for 100 stitches. But um, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm working on that center pumpkin. And then I have two more pumpkins and some little motifs. But what I did is I just took this bottom border and just moved it up. I just cut the words out and just moved it up. So, um, I will say I'm not drawn to pick this up because of the next project you're going to see. Because I had a new start. I have only started maybe four things this year. Um, I don't know. I just wasn't feeling the starts at all. But then I knew I wanted to start this after StitchCon because there was a lady named Lisa who had done this and did a color conversion. So I knew I was like, I have to do this. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know what it is. It's Dog's Declaration by Ink Circles. And uh, I'm addicted to it. I cannot stop stitching on it. I started it... Um, uh, which day did I start it? June 24th. So I've been working on this for three weeks. I have a hair somewhere. It's tickling my arm. Um, yeah, so three weeks. That's all I've been working on it. Um, I did a floss conversion. These are, I think they're all color and cotton. Yes. And what I do is I just use um, an erasable, like heat erasable pen, and I just put the uh, symbol on it so that I don't have to worry about pulling out my chart, figuring out what color it's supposed to be, what color this was. Um, so I just put my symbols on the backs. So I pulled out, and I'm so glad I did, I had gotten this on a fight night from Brandy at Be Stitch Me, and it is a 22 count, not another sampler. I love 22 count. I actually, after I started this, I sent Brandy an email and I said, can I change my fabric of the month from 36 count linen to 22 count Nita? And there's a fight night this weekend this Friday and I will be um, looking for the 22 count. So there's some dog hair on this. I apologize, but I've been working on it a lot. So I started in the center with that giant tree in the middle. And then I just kind of worked motifs that called out to me and then wandered over to the far left, my right, your left. <laughs> So, yes, I have gotten a ton done on this. And Dog's Declaration is not small. It'll take up most of this piece of fabric. But I had to. I had to. And I, I literally cannot stop stitching on it. I am in love with that center tree. And this border that I started the other night. I actually got all of that part of the border done. And then this was actually um, spun for today just for a hundred stitches. So I'll start working on the flowers that go on here. But oh, I'm just so excited about it. And 
honestly, if I get done with whatever was spun for the day, I gravitate toward this. I'm not even sure how many, I'd have to add it up to see how many stitches I've done on it so far, but it's a lot. <laughs> but I can't, I just can't stop stitching on it. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, um, I believe I did give someone my color conversion on Instagram. If you go back and look at, I think the first post of this, or maybe the second one, someone asked. And you know, it's kind of hard because with hand-dyed flosses, they, they're not always the same. Like, <laughs> So, you know, I could have gotten this Marigold in one of my monthly, um, my subscription, my monthly floss subscription. Uh, and someone else could have bought it off the website and it might be a totally different shade. So it's a good starting point though. If you need like a starting point, um, check my Instagram if you want those colors. And it, it took me like two days to pick those colors. <laughs> I just kept going back and forth and I would look at it and then I would look at it some more and I'd say, okay, yeah, I think this will work. And actually one of the yellows was not, it was more brownie yellow than like a, cause it was for the crowns at the top. Not, I needed like a golden yellow. So I actually ripped out one entire crown and came back down here to my floss and found a different color. So, so yes, I have done a lot of stitching on, um, dog's declaration. Can't help it. It's just, I'm just, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And I have done a lot of stitching lately. I haven't had as much work, but I, <sighs> I have two jobs now. They're both doing essentially the same thing uh, for different companies, but um, I just, I start, I did all my orientation and paperwork and stuff for the second one this week, so um, I'll start that next week. But I was only getting, like this week, or not this week, last week, I only had two and a half hours of work for the entire week. So if I wasn't in the pool, like if it was an icky weather day, I would like clean and feed myself and... I mean, I would clean the house. I would also clean myself. <laughs> Sounded so weird. And then I would um, stitch. So I did get my July colors for color and cotton. So if you didn't get yours, I get the 10 skein um, thread club. That's what I was looking for. So here are mine. We're getting we're getting darker. I'm actually kind of surprised that the colors are this dark because July, you think of July if you're in the U S and you think of independence day and summer and like bright. And these are very not bright. So I don't know. I mean, sometimes they go with the season. Sometimes they don't. And then I apologize for this. I hadn't taken it out of the plastic yet. This will be I think, I think Brandy switched it. So I'll be getting 22 count, um, this month, but this is a 36 count, um, fabric of the month from July, I think. And it's called summer sunrise. It is bright. It looks not as bright on the screen. Um, it is bright. At first I was like, Oh, something Halloween. Like that's a little better. Uh, but it's even kind of bright for Halloween. So I don't know if I'm going to, if I'll find anything to stitch on this or maybe I need to de-stash because I have, oh, it, this is my floss, hand eye floss. Underneath are two gray bins that are both completely full of fabric. Um, I may need to de-stash some fabric, I think. Stuff that I haven't, that I've had for a couple of years that I have not used probably needs if I hadn't found a project for it by now, it might need to go. So that's that. Now I'm going to go through my projects for my quilt retreat real quick because I'm excited and this will give me kind of a record of how much progress I think I'm going to get, excuse me, and how much I actually get. So, um, if you don't want to see any of the quilt stuff, I hope you have a fantastic week. Um, my next video will be a whip parade. And then I'll go over, um, in my next floss tube, 
I'll go over the quilt retreat. I won't do that in my whip parade. So let's see what I'm going to take with me. So the first one, this is going to be a new start. It is from Prairie Grass Patterns. And this is actually April Rosenthal. Um, this is one of her patterns. I am using a layer cake of Golden Aster. It's a Riley Blake fabric. And I have my white. This is the only thing I've not cut yet that I need to do today before I finalize my packing. I need to cut the white. I'm cutting everything for the new starts before I leave. I don't want to waste time cutting at the quilt retreat. I want to be sewing. So here are all my pieces cut. And I'm actually going to show you these B squares because they're square and I don't have to worry about stretching them out. But this fabric is very like, I don't, I don't know, modern, but retro. I don't even know how to describe it. Like, I just, I don't know. So I got to be careful with these cause I don't want to stretch them. They're cut on the bias, but I mean, there's like golds and pinks and grays. Um, and navy and they're just I'm very excited so I got all my pieces cut except for the white this one will be probably um, the most challenging one I have because there's a lot of I've never sewn with a cut angle like this like usually you sew two squares together or you sew them together diagonally and then cut it so you have a half square triangle. So this is, this will be interesting for me. I'm not scared. All right, so that is that one. And this is still out of its bag because I do have to cut that white. So this one, I know you've seen this before from Thimble Blossoms, Camille Ross Kelly. I am actually using Bonnie and Camille fabric from a million years ago that is called April Showers. Now I have all the blocks done. I have all the sashing cut and all the little cornerstones. So here they did like stars. I'm only doing the square in the middle. I'm not doing the um, like the little half square triangle things on the end. So I'm just gonna hold the bag up. So I have all my squares. They're already sorted into rows. There's my cornerstones. Here's my sashing. So my goal is to sew this entire quilt top together. So I'll sew my rows, then I'll sew my rows together. So really that's kind of the no brainer you can chat while you're doing it. Make sure my iron is not on. All right, this next one is gonna be a new start. It is from the Bonnie and Camille um, quilt bee book. And it is the Good Times Quilt. And I'm very excited about this. So this uses a layer cake. And my layer cake is um, Dwell from I think Dwell is Lola Boutique, right? If I'm wrong, correct me. Um, I don't think I put the thing in here. But I have all of my pieces cut. So there's all the white, all my backgrounds. And then, oops. So they're all like navies and kind of like lighter blue. And then there's green in here. It's a little bit of red and some peach but yeah <laughs> this is gonna be amazing very like nautical I think that's how I feel about dwell I feel like it's very nautical I have a lot of stuff marked in here by the way but only one quilt coming out of this book so that's a new start that one will be fairly simple though it's just a lot of like larger half square triangles and squares being sewn together. Okay, this one, I have all the pieces made, 
I just need to put them together. So this is from the Christmas Stitched Jolly Bar. It's the only place you can get the Christmas cookies quilt. Actually, they did have, I want to say they had a kit that was like the entire, um, like the backing and the binding and the background and everything. But, so I had gotten the Jolly Bar, so I got this pattern. And then I have all of my pieces ready to go. So I have all of my half square triangles. And then these are all the squares that go like in the center of the tree. So it's all reds and greens and like tans. Very fig tree. Very fig tree. So that one I'll just need to lay out each Christmas tree and then I can start sewing them together because I want to make sure I don't have two reds next to each other or get down to like the last two trees and all I have are red squares left or red pieces like triangles and squares. So the layout part I did not do here. I'm going to do there. It'll give me a chance to like get up and move around. This one is my, um, my scrap. It's my scrappy string quilt. So for this one, I don't know if you remember when I made these, I made 36 of them so far and I need 84, I think, 82. Wait. Yeah, 82. Um, that's not right, I don't need 82. I need 72. I think I cut too many. But anyway, so you cut a piece of 10 by 10, um, sew on interfacing, and then you sew different size strips onto it, and then you cut it down. These are nine and a half by nine and a half. So when I sew them together, um, yeah, it's, I need 72. So I actually have already cut the rest of the um, sew on interfacing. So it's all in here. And then um, I have my scraps that I'm taking with me and all my scraps will, they're just in a box and I just pull pieces out and as long as they're not the exact same color next to each other, good to go. So I will have not as many blocks as I thought now. So I'll have, if I have 36, I need 36 more. It's less than I thought. I don't know why I was thinking I needed 82. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then the last one is actually two quilts. So I started this just informal stitch along with Crystal Row, and it is Among the Stars again. This is, was a block of the month book, and it actually has a Christmas version. And it also shows the colors. This is Fig Tree for um, Halloween version. So this is Lella Boutique uh, Christmas Morning Fabric, which I am using for one of them. And then the other fabric is Gingham Gardens. So I have all of my sashings for both quilts. And then these are, I have two more large blocks for each quilt and then six smaller blocks for each quilt to make. So I have all my pieces for that. And then just to, I don't wanna mess anything up. Just to remind you, this is Gingham Gardens. So pretty. So each block uses the same colors, but it um, like inverts them. And then this is Christmas Eve. So I want to get these blocks finished and hopefully get the quilt tops assembled. I told you, big plans, big plans. So I'm going to put all this stuff right back where it was. I have extra sashing pieces. I have um, a few extra pieces of fabric just in case I mess something up. Because that's the last thing I want is to be almost done and then mess something up. So, there's technically two in here. 
And then the last thing I actually, pardon my standing up. So these are the Designer Mystery 2020 Block of the Month. I had only done the first two blocks of this. But I went through and I cut all the pieces and left it in the bag with each pattern for each month. So I have months three through 12 in the bag. And all I'm gonna do is make the blocks. I'm not gonna assemble anything because there's a whole finishing kit uh, that has other pieces that go with it. It's not just the blocks put together. So it has like a whole setting for it. But just every once in a while, I'll just grab one of these and I'll put it together. And hopefully I'll get all 12 of them throughout the weekend made. It helps that everything is cut. I literally just have to sew them together. Um, so I have nine of those to do. Wait, no, 10 of those to do because I've only done blocks one and two. So weird. So weird. I don't know why I only did the first two blocks in that, but they'll get done. So that's all I have. Um, I'm excited about this weekend. I'm very excited. Uh, but I need to go do some work. Like real work. I have to go to CVS. So I will um, see you guys next week. And this will probably go out a little bit later today. But that's okay. Um, it's just because I'm going to go work and then I'll come back and edit. Because I'll have to pick my kids up in about an hour and a half. I will see you guys next week. Uh, keep an eye on Instagram if you feel so inclined. I will be probably sharing some quilt retreat stuff and hopefully learning a whole bunch about the quilt retreat process because I have no idea. No clue. So I'll see everyone next week. Bye.